Um, hello, uh, today I will talk about uh, blockchain security and the uh, smart uh, contracts vulnerabilities. Uh, who am I? Uh, uh, putem vorbi în română, ar fi de, uh, s-ar putea să fii și persoane în care... Uh, știu, dar am prezentarea toată în engleză. Da, nu, nu e în regulă asta, nu e nicio problemă, dar de vorbit în română ar trebui să fie mai ușor de înțeles pentru toată lumea. Dacă ți-e ok așa. Da, aș prefera sincer să fac și în engleză, dacă că tot mi-am structurat așa și mi-ar fi, adică... Mm, ok, sigur. Da, e o problemă? Nu, 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 e în regulă. Da? Ok, perfect. Uh, who am I? Uh, I work as a penetration tester consultant at KPMG in Romania. My area of uh, expertise uh, is in uh, web security, in uh, networking security, and uh, I have uh, a passion for, uh, for blockchain security. I'm... Uh, somehow new, new in this, uh, in this uh, field. Uh, so um, what, is, uh, what is blockchain? Uh, blockchain uh, is a technology that allows, uh, allows users and uh, organization to store and uh, process data with uh, the structure to distribute the blocks present in a blockchain network. Of course, uh, each uh, new block stores a transaction or a bundle of uh, transactions that is connected uh, to all the previously available blocks in the form of a cryptographic chain. Um, let's uh, talk about uh, how, uh, how blockchain uh, works. So uh, blockchain basically works uh, as a distributed network that uh, enables uh, decentralization of data, which makes it more secure and hard to temper technology. Uh, it is a decentralized public uh, ledger network that allows organization to connect to it via nodes for data storage and processing. Uh, how is the data stored? The data is stored in blocks and uh, can be accessed with uh, verification, validation, uh, and uh, consumed by uh, the original entity that wants to store, process the data. So uh, uh, as we can uh, see in the, in the slide, Uh, the first step uh, is the transaction request, uh, a block uh, representing a transaction that is created. Uh, the block is sent to every node in the network. After that, uh, nodes uh, validating the transaction and the nodes receive a reward for uh, the proof of work. Uh, the block is uh, added to existing blockchain and after that, the transaction is, uh, is uh, completed. Uh, what is uh, blockchain security? So uh, blockchain security, uh, it's a procedure done for a blockchain solution or a network uh, to ensure its uh, security. Uh, it's uh, achieved uh, via the implementation of cybersecurity frameworks, security testing methodologies, and uh, secure coding practices to protect the blockchain solution from online frauds, uh, breaches, and uh, other cyber attacks. Uh, why I uh, choose this presentation? Uh, why I choose blockchain security? Uh, in the last uh, year, uh, we can uh, saw that uh, uh, nearly two billions of dollars hacked in the crypto space alone. Uh, that is uh, the amount that uh, DeFi protocols were reported to have lost in the last uh, 365 days to the cyber attacks and other vulnerabilities exploits. Uh, and uh, in the next slide, uh, yeah, this is why blockchain security. So in less than uh, a, a year's time, on, more than uh, one point billion uh, has been stolen from smart contract based projects that uh, are, you know, on uh, top various blockchain infrastructure. Uh, so a lot of these projects are various, you know, exchanges and other sort of blockchain based projects where they are implementing. Uh, and uh, Of course, uh, uh, the thing is that uh, a lot of times the, the smart contracts will uh, literally take one or two lines of code that are vulnerable. And uh, in uh, these cases uh, where they are vulnerable, it results in uh, uh, this, uh, this major attacks, so major hacks that, that uh, just ran this uh, massive amount of funds project. Uh, we can uh, see in the slide, uh, we have uh, some uh, companies, Pay Network, uh, uh, Bed, Gerdao, uh, Compound, and we can, uh, we can see uh, how, many, how many they lost. Uh, 
In terms of uh, blockchain elements that uh, need uh, securing, uh, we have uh, two layers. We have layer one and layer two. In the layer one, layer one, the underlying blockchain protocol itself, we have Bitcoin Core. In layer two, we have uh, an uh, overlaying network uh, on top of layer one, typically focused on uh, scalability. We have uh, Bitcoin uh, linking networks. And of course, we have uh, smart contracts, automatically executing programs, deploy to the blockchain, uh, some examples, tokens, uh, dApps, uh, entities, uh, etc. Uh, what is uh, what is a smart contract? Uh, basically, smart contract is a simply program that runs on uh, the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, it's a collection of code and data uh, that um, resides uh, at a specific address on the Ethereum blockchain. Smart contracts are a type of Ethereum account. This means that uh, they have a balance and they can send transaction over the network. However, uh, this, uh, they are not uh, controlled by a user. Uh, instead, they are deployed to the network and uh, run as uh, programmed. Um, user accounts can, be, uh, can interact with uh, smart contracts by submitting transaction that execute a function uh, defined uh, on the smart contract. So in smart contracts, uh, uh, smart contracts can define rules like a regular contract and uh, automatically uh, enforce them via the code. Uh, of course, uh, they cannot be deleted by default and the uh, inter interactions with them are irreversible. Uh, in terms of uh, who can write a smart contract, so uh, everyone, anyone can write a smart contract and uh, deploy it to the network. Uh, you just need to learn how to code in a smart contract language and uh, have enough uh, uh, ATH to deploy your contract. Deploying a smart contract is a technical transaction. So you need to pay your gas in the same way you need to pay gas for a simple ATH transfer. Uh, so gas cost for contract deployment are far higher, however. Uh, in terms of uh, programming languages, uh, there are a lot of programming languages in smart contracts. Uh, uh, the most common, I think, uh, are Viper and uh, Solidity. Solidity, uh, it's a high-level language for writing smart contracts. Uh, it's by the far the most dominant language currently. Uh, the syntax is similar to, to JavaScript, or we can consider similar to, to C++, but uh, it's more similar with JavaScript. And smart contracts alone cannot get information about real world events because they can send a HTTP request. This is uh, of course uh, by design. Uh, let's uh, take a look uh, into understanding the, the smart contracts. Uh, of course, the smart contracts uh, are classified into four different types uh, according to their usage by programmers for building apps. So uh, here are uh, the types. Uh, we have uh, decentralized uh, autonomous organization. Uh, this involves a set of rules established and controlled by organization members and not influenced by external entities. We have also smart uh, legal contracts, uh, which involves strict legal resources, also known as a legally infor enforceable smart contract, and contracts of, of uh, applied logics. Uh, these are built on uh, a decentralized network that combines a smart contract with the front-end user interface. Uh, in terms of uh, what can smart contracts be used for? So, so we have uh, some uh, common ways of using smart contracts. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, uh, multi-signature accounts. Uh, uh, funds can uh, only uh, be spent uh, when uh, required preferences of people agree. We have uh, the encoding financial agreements, uh, manage agreements between users. Say uh, if one person buy insurance from an insurance company, the rules of uh, when the insurance can be redeemed can be programmed into a smart contract. We have also the uh, agreements based on the outside world. We have a provider party, in provide third party, it's similar how to a software, a software library works. Smart contract can work with other smart contracts in a chain. We have uh, in the last the storage, uh, store information about application, such as uh, domain registration information or membership records. 
Uh, storage in a blockchain like uh, Ethereum is unique uh, in uh, that the data is immutable and can be, can be erased. Uh, let's talk about uh, where security issues arise in smart contracts. So we have uh, smart contracts platforms, we have uh, application that uh, integrates with black blockchain, and we have, uh, of course, uh, smart contract uh, code and specific vulnerabilities. Um, in smart contracts platforms, we have Ethereum, we have uh, Solana, we have Cosmos, and, uh, and uh, many others. Uh, so let's uh, have a look uh, about uh, how uh, is the smart contract uh, set up. Uh, the developer uh, pushes the smart contract uh, to the Ethereum network, which is what enforces the contract, not allowing anyone to take the money unless they follow the exact rules in the code. Uh, thousands of computers from around the world then uh, all uh, can have a copy of, uh, of the smart contract. Uh, in terms of how to use a smart contract, uh, anyone can use a smart contract if, uh, if they have uh, uh, Ethereum's Navy token either, which can be bought on uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, why uh, Ethereum smart contracts? So um, the world's first uh, cryptocurrency was Bitcoin. Uh, so is was the first to support basic smart contracts, although they are extremely limited in comparison with Ethereum. Each transaction is a smart contract because the network it will only approve uh, uh, of the transaction if, uh, of course, uh, standard conditions are met. Uh, that uh, the user provides a digital signature, providing uh, proving that uh, they indeed uh, own the cryptocurrency they claim to own. So uh, by contrast, uh, Ethereum replaced Bitcoin, Bitcoins, uh, more restrictive language, uh, replacing uh, it with uh, language that allows developers to use the blockchain to process uh, more than uh, just uh, cryptocurrency trans transactions. So the language is uh, Turing com complete, meaning uh, it supports uh, a broader uh, set of uh, computational instructions. Uh, of course, without limits, uh, pr programmers can write just about uh, any smart contract they can think of. Uh, while uh, this uh, has uh, obvious advantages, of course, it also means that uh, because uh, novel smart contracts are less tested, there is a high chance uh, of uh, vulnerabilities. So uh, right now, Ethereum has uh, already seen uh, millions of dollars of Losses from losses from uh, exploit vulnerabilities in uh, their smart contracts. Uh, let's talk uh, about the uh, Ethereum vir virtual machine uh, and uh, how uh, does it work? Uh, if uh, let's say you are trying uh, to develop a smart contract on uh, the Ethereum blockchain, uh, you might be familiar with uh, with uh, this uh, EMV term. So uh, virtual machines are essentially create, creating a level of uh, abstraction between the executing code and uh, the executing machine. So this layer is needed to improve the portability of software, uh, as well as to make uh, sure application are uh, of course separated from each other and uh, separated from, uh, from their host. Um, Let's uh, take a look uh, of, of the code. This is uh, this is uh, us, us creating a smart contract uh, contract uh, simple uh, simple example. Uh, we have a defined variable owner of uh, the type address. We have the constructor, and we have the function to recover uh, the funds of the contract. Uh, so uh, yeah, the smart contracts are often written in. Uh, programming languages called Solidity. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, similar, to, similar to JavaScript and uh, smart contracts, uh, languages like Solidity cannot be executed by uh, the uh, EFB uh, directly. Instead, uh, they are compiled to low level uh, machine instruction uh, called uh, opcodes. And we will see later about that. Uh, if uh, we take a look about Ethereum virtual machine, uh, it's a virtual machine on the blockchain, 
Of course, as I mentioned, uh, use uh, opcodes to execute the task. Uh, each opcode op code has a base uh, guest code. All contracts are uh, executed uh, on uh, all nodes. Um, there are uh, rules for changing the machine state and the uh, storage uh, can be uh, permanent or also volatile. Uh, in terms of uh, vulnerabilities in uh, application that integrate with uh, blockchain, uh, we have a private key used to sign transaction. Uh, we have uh, servers, OS not uh, harder than patch regularly. And of course, web application helping users interact with blockchain uh, has of course uh, traditional security vulnerabilities and uh, invalid uh, access control to, to server. Uh, let's take a look about uh, smart contracts uh, security vulnerabilities. So we, we can have in a smart contract problematic language design. We can have smart contract specific vulnerability we can have a traditional language vulnerability or uh, inherently dangerous methods. Uh, let's take a look about uh, access specifiers. Uh, we, we have uh, this uh, also in other programming languages. We have public, uh, private methods, public methods uh, and attributes can be accessed from uh, other contracts in private can be only called by uh, other methods of uh, the contract itself. And in internal can uh, only be called uh, by uh, contract or, uh, or delivered uh, classes. And of course, we have the external can be called from a third party and the default, uh, if it's not non-specified, the attributes are private. Uh, so, uh, uh, in terms of uh, different methods used to send money, we have uh, uh, address point call point value uh, allows you to specify a uh, guess, uh, returns boolean and uh, does not uh, propagate exceptions. We have uh, the send function, uh, which is default uh, the amount of uh, guess to uh, 2,300. Uh, it's used for smart contracts with simple fallback fu functions or to send uh, uh, either to, to people. Uh, it's important uh, because uh, not checking the return value from send functions, call functions, and uh, delegate call functions are the source of, uh, of many security issues in Ethereum. We have uh, different methods to, to invoke uh, uh, context methods. We have, uh, of course, call function, uh, invokes a payable method on a contract, and uh, can transfer uh, either and specify the amount to, of guests to use. And the delegate call, it's similar to call function, call function but uh, runs uh, within the caller's context. Uh, the following can uh, occur as a result of uh, errors in, uh, in uh, the method. Uh, if uh, let's say the address that the method is being invoked on uh, is not a contract, then uh, the call returns uh, without errors. If uh, the address of uh, is a contract uh, and the method signature exactly matches a method in the target contract, then uh, the method uh, is invoked. Uh, let's uh, talk about running out of gas. Uh, basically, guess is provided uh, by an invoker of a contract method to pay for lines of code that are executed uh, within the contract method. So guess uh, is meant uh, to deter over consumption of system resources by contract code and uh, offset minor CPU processing costs. Uh, we have also dynamic libraries. Um, uh, it's important to make sure uh, as a developer that you understand uh, how libraries you are using are dynamically are updated uh, and used. Uh, libraries execute uh, as a delegated call as I talk later. Um, essentially becoming the contract that invoke the library. So that dynamic library can be updated to, to send uh, the incorporating contracts uh, either to, to anyone. Um, so uh, let's take a look about uh, a basic Ethereum smart contract. So uh, 
in the first of all, uh, let's look uh, at this because um, our contract will be very uh, rudimentary and will uh, codify the protocol of a very simple cell phone contract between a cell company and a subscriber. So in the first uh, in the first place uh, we create a, we create we create a contract class yeah so uh, in the next step we set uh, we set up the we set up the internal state uh, first we we declare the a monthly cost variable uh, we'll uh, use this monthly cost variable later when uh, determining if the cell subscriber has paid their contract in full um, in the first step um, we add the subscriber functionality uh, so uh, we defined a new public uh, uh, make payment function uh, that uh, basically allows the subscriber to make a payment towards their account so at this point we have a contract that uh, can be deployed with uh, an established monthly cost and of course accept uh, either bill payments for from a subscriber Next, uh, we need uh, to add the functionality that allows the cell phone company to check the status of uh, the account on a given date. So it's important to add the company functionality. Uh, the cell phone company uh, can call this uh, simplify function and uh, pass a given uh, number of uh, at least uh, months uh, to determine the status of the subscriber account at, uh, at a point in time. So we determined the total amount that uh, should have be paid, and uh, we can compare that to the internal either balance uh, of the contract using this uh, address, this point balance. Uh, in the last uh, uh, step, we uh, need uh, to have the ability to withdraw uh, uh, funds. Uh, so we add a final public function called the uh, withdraw balance that basically allows an account to be, to be emptied. Uh, the function body uh, uses uh, the global MSG object that refers to the last incoming uh, transaction payload. So this uh, was our first uh, first uh, simple example. Uh, in terms of uh, security issues with smart contracts, um, we have uh, we have access control. Uh, let's take uh, an example: a smart contract uh, uh, designed the address, which uh, initializes uh, it uh, as a contract owner. Uh, so this uh, is a common pattern from granted. Uh, special privileges, such as the ability to withdraw the contracts funds. Uh, unfortunately, the initialization function uh, can be called by anyone. So let's take a look uh, at the code example. Uh, the contract initialization function set the color of the function uh, as its owner. However, the logic uh, is detached from uh, the contracts constructor. And it does uh, not keep uh, track of uh, the fact that uh, it has been uh, already it uh, already been called. Um, in the next uh, slide, I will talk about uh, reentry attack. So uh, when uh, when uh, this attack uh, occurs, when uh, the attacker drains funds from uh, the target by uh, recursively calling the target's window function. So uh, we, we have uh, the, the victim, uh, as you can see in the slide, we, can, we have the victim uh, contract. Uh, so uh, below um, uh, this, uh, this function uh, contains the, the reentry vulnerability. Uh, the withdraw function is where the, of course, vulnerability exists and uh, is sending funds uh, that running uh, an if statement to an external call. So avoid the external calls uh, when, uh, when is possible, it's my advice, because calls can be, uh, can calls uh, uh, to unstructured uh, contract can introduce unexpected risk, errors, and uh, execute malicious code. Uh, uh, the withdraw function in the victim's contracts uh, set uh, one um, ATH, to message punk center. 
the attacker should uh, only be able to, to receive uh, that uh, one ACH. But of course, the attacker is able to call the function more than one time before a function finishes executing. So this is uh, the vulnerability. Uh, let's take a look about the uh, attacker's contract. So below is the attacker's contract. Uh, the attacker contract declares a uh, variable V uh, after, uh, after the class uh, was declared. Uh, so this variability is set in the constructor. Uh, the attack function calls the windrow function in the victim's contracts. So when uh, HH is received, uh, the fallback function in the, the attack contract is invoked. The fallback function causes uh, the log uh, fallback event to fire, uh, the if uh, statement uh, in, uh, in the attacker code uh, executes the withdraw function in the victim's contract up to 10 times. Uh, and of course, the if statement uh, counter keeps the withdraw function call from, uh, uh, from running out of guess, which would ever cause the stolen uh, HH to revert. Uh, other, uh, let's have a look uh, about other uh, types uh, of attacks in smart contracts. So uh, we have uh, denial of service. Uh, in this, uh, this attack is uh, deadly in uh, the world of Ethereum. Let's say uh, uh, if uh, we have other application that eventually can recover, uh, smart contracts can be taken offline uh, uh, very easily by, by these attacks. So uh, there are many ways uh, lead to denial of service, including uh, malicious behaving when uh, being the recipient of uh, transaction, and of course, uh, artificially increasing the guess necessary to compute a function and uh, abusing access controls to access private components of a smart contract. Um, this class of attack includes uh, many different uh, variants and uh, we'll probably see a lot of uh, development in uh, the years to come, I think. Uh, we have another vulnerability that is uh, front running, uh, is uh, also known uh, as uh, time, time of check versus time of use. Uh, so uh, it's hard to, to, to take a look at the code because in, in this presentation, because uh, it takes uh, about uh, uh, 200 lines of Python to get a working front uh, running algorithm. So basically the concept it is uh, science uh, miners always get uh, rewarded via gas fees for running code. Um, on the have uh, of externally on addresses, users can uh, specify uh, higher fees to have their transaction. Uh, more quickly. So uh, since the Ethereum blockchain is public, everyone can see the contents of uh, other spending transactions. Uh, this means uh, if uh, a given user is uh, revealing the solution to, to a puzzle or I don't know, other valuable secret, a malicious user can steal the, the solution and uh, of course copy the, their transaction with, uh, with higher fees to print uh, the original solution. So uh, if uh, developers of smart contracts uh, are not careful, this situation can lead uh, to practical and uh, devastating front running attacks. Uh, it's uh, important to, uh, to understand uh, the best uh, practices to secure smart contracts. Uh, it's important to do a static analysis of, uh, of your code to identify uh, style and uh, of course uh, vulnerable code. You can perform also security analysis for smart contract using uh, trusted tools like uh, uh, Mitril, like uh, Manticore, and uh, you can uh, you can use uh, automated uh, vulnerability scanners. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, was my presentation. If you have uh, any question. 